In this lecture, we're going to discuss the process of salvation, and we're going to look at the different types of molecules, solvent molecules, that exist in organic chemistry. So let's begin by defining what salvation is. Salvation is the process by which a solvent molecule stabilizes a product molecule, which is usually, but not always, a charged species. Now, four different types of solvents exist. Protic, aprotic, polar, and nonpolar. So let's begin with protic solvents. Protic solvents are molecules that are able to donate an H atom. And some examples include water molecules, carboxylic acids, and alcohols. Each of these molecules are able to donate an H atom. Now, let's define aprotic solvents. Aprotic solvents are molecules that are not able to donate an H atom. And some examples include CH3CN, any type of hydrocarbon, and nitromethane. Now notice, aprotic does not mean lack of H atoms. In fact, every single one of these examples has an H atom. What aprotic means is that the H atom will not be lost easily. The bond will be strong, and so our H atom will not want to dissociate. Now, the third type of solvent is a polar solvent. Polar solvents, or polar molecules, are molecules that have a net dipole moment, that have an overall dipole moment on the molecule, while nonpolar solvents are molecules that do not have a net dipole moment. The net dipole moment of all nonpolar molecules is zero. Now, most of the protic solvents are polar. So let's look at the following two examples. Let's look at water and our alcohol. Recall that oxygen is much more electronegative than the H atoms or carbon atoms. So that means the oxygens will pull electrons stronger than either of the H atoms or the carbon atoms. And that means our electron density will be closer to our oxygen atoms. And so oxygen will have a partial negative charge while the H's and the carbons will have a partial positive charge. And so we're going to have a net dipole moment on this molecule as well as this molecule. So we define protic polar solvents as solvents that contain a dipole moment as well as an H atom that can be donated for hydrogen bonding. So these two molecules can hydrogen bond, they can donate an H atom. So these two H atoms here can be donated, and this H atom here can be donated. Why? Well, because this bond, and this bond, and this bond are relatively weak, because the electrons are closer to our oxygens. Now, aprotic solvents can be both polar as well as nonpolar. So let's look at the aprotic polar solvent. These solvents contain a net dipole moment, but do not have an available H atom. So this is one example which is given here, nitromethane. So this is aprotic and it's polar. Notice that oxygen is more electronegative than the N, and the N is more electronegative than the carbon. So that means we're going to have a partial negative charge on this oxygen, a partial positive on this guy, and a partial positive on this carbon. So we're going to have a net dipole moment on this molecule. Now let's look at the following molecule. This is also an aprotic molecule because it cannot donate an H atom. These sp3 hybridized bonds are relatively strong, and so this H will not dissociate in the same way that the H here will not dissociate. So, Aprotic nonpolar solvents contains no available hydrogens to donate and no net dipole moment. Now, even though carbon and the H differ in electronegativity, if we sum up all the vectors, all the dipole moments of all these four uh, bonds, we will get a net dipole moment of zero. And so this has no dipole moment, it's nonpolar, and it has no H atoms that it can readily donate. So it's aprotic. Now, 
How do we choose a solvent? How do we know what solvent to choose for a particular reaction? Well, two things must be taken into consideration whenever we're choosing a solvent. One, make sure the solvent can stabilize the product. Remember, the entire point of solvation is for the solvent to stabilize the product so that our reaction is more product favored. For example, if sodium chloride, a solid, is placed into water, a beaker of water, that sodium chloride will dissociate into its two ion forms. And the water molecules will hydrogen bond. They will donate the H atoms to these positive and negative charges. So the water molecule will stabilize this product and that's exactly why this reaction will be product favored. The second thing we should take into consideration is that solvent molecules should remain unreactive in the reaction. In other words, they should not compete with our reactants because if they compete with the reactants, the reaction that we're trying to accomplish will decrease, the rate of it will decrease. You want your solvent to remain relatively unreactive and you want your solvent to stabilize the actual product so that your reaction is more product favored.